It's verses 1 through 12. We have responsive reading. As where fire kindled brush, brushwood and the fire caused water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eyes has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for Him. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Your holy cities have a big have become a wilderness, Zion has become a wilderness, Jerusalem a desolation. Will you restrain yourself at these things, O Lord? Will you keep silent and afflict us so terribly? Amen. Let us bless each other, be at peace. We are the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. Hallelujah. You and I are the child of God. And the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Not just does He dwell in us, He guides us perfectly and most accurately. Just like the choir prays, I really hope that this worship becomes a worship where you're really guided by the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we cannot have victory. And today's title is Those Who Hold On to the Lord. Especially if you see in verse 7, it says, it says, There is no one who calls upon your name and who rouses himself to take hold of you. And that is why, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hands of our iniquities. Then what is the covenant that we must hold on to in this age? Really, call out to the Lord and become the person who holds on to the Lord. Then God will restore everything. In today's prayer, it is the content of a prayer of, of, of a prophet, and he is urgently praying. The Israelites were captivated by the Babylonians, and from 70 years of captivity, they come back because of the power of the Lord. But after they came back, their land was had become ruined. And in front of that, prophet Isaiah, he, he prays. That is why if you see in verse 1, it says, Come and take us, come down, 
and save us, it says that the mountains might quake at your presence. And he also says, uh, send us the fire, and through the fire, make the water spoil. And as they were praying that way, and you're able to see that in the middle of the passage, they lose strength because they have not received the help of God for a long time. And now they, because of that, they start to have assumption and skeptic, skepticism before God. And if you see in the last, in the end of the passage, they start to gain hope. They say that we are the clay. If you see in verse 8, it tells us, it says, but now, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the works of your hand. And it is the prayer that is asking God to make us into a beautiful vessel of God again. And so what is the core of this prayer? It is what must we hold on to and pray. Just as the prayer, though that Though that we might be in a very bad situation, if God comes upon us and reveals himself to us, then everything will be restored. So what is the first point that the people of God must hold on to and pray? We must pray so that God will work upon us in power. So what was it like when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt? It was a tremendous power. God pours down 10 disasters to Egypt. And when the Israelites were faced with the Red Sea, God split the Red Sea. And when God was giving Moses and the people of Israel the law, the whole Mount Sinai was engulfed in flames. And after the wilderness, there was a different type of power that was revealed when the Israelites were going inside of the land of Canaan. They crossed the Jordan, they broke down the Jericho wall, and even the sun and the moon stopped. But this was a different power that was revealed during Exodus. And after the Israelites settled into the land of Canaan, it seemed as if the power of God was not being revealed to them. So you're able to see that the power of God was like volcano that exploded when, uh, during the time of Exodus. But after they uh, spied on the land of Canaan and settled in, and it seemed as if the God, the power of God, was the disappearing, and later on, they thought to themselves, the power of God disappeared inside of their lives. And that is why Isaiah starts to pray, saying, give us the power that you showed us during the time of Exodus. And Isaiah prays so that the power of God that was revealed during Exodus may be revealed upon them today. That is verses 1 and 2 in today's passage. And 
하늘을 가르시고 강림하셔 달라고 기도하고 있는 것입니다. And he's praying so that we God really work upon our lives again. I'll read verse one and two. Oh, that you will run the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. Said. 옛날 출애굽 하실 때 나타났던 그 능력으로 지금 또 우리에게 찾아와 주십사라고 이스라엘 백성들이 기도하고 있는 것. That Israelites are praying so that may God work upon them just like the time of Exodus. 그렇게 기도할 수 있었던 이유는 무엇일까요? What was the reason that they were able to pray this way? 죽은 것이 아니라는 사실을 발견한 겁니다. They knew that the power of God is not dead. 살아계신 하나님이 사실, 살아계신 하나님이라는 사실을 and they were able to discover that God is the God who is still alive at this time. Why was God so silent? And why the power of God was that explosive? They were able to find that reason. And that is why Isaiah finds that and prays, May your power explode again and again come upon us. In power. 기적적으로 능력으로 우리에게 찾아와 달라는 기도를 오늘 본문에 하고 있는 것입니다. And in power and miracle, come back to us. This is the content of the prayer. 이미 모든 것을 보시고요. And God knows everything. 알고 계시고요. He sees everything. 내가 원하시기만 하면 우리에게 능력으로 기적으로 찾아올 수 있다라는 사실을 발견한 것입니다. And if God wants to, then He can come upon us in power. 이스라엘 백성들의 많은 사람들의 마음 심령 속에 하나님의 능력이 서서히 식어 감을 알고 있었습니다. Isaiah knew that the inside of the hearts of the Israelites, the power of God was diminishing, but it wasn't the power of God diminishing. It was their faith that was diminishing. 이스라엘 백성들의 그 믿음이 식어지고 있고 없어지는 것을 깨닫게 된 것입니다. But People think that the power of God is diminishing. But the Israelites in today's passage, they were able to realize that their faith was the one that was diminishing. So they pray that may the power of God come upon us again. Many people live their lives as if the things of the world is everything. Being acknowledged by the people of the world and becoming classy, and they want to become successful and follow after the world, but that, in the end, the results were disaster. Just like the Jewish people, they thought they knew God, but they did not truly know God. As we walk our walk of faith. It might seem as if we are just vaguely walking on a walk of faith. And at that time, without us knowing, humanistic ways are revealed. And at that time, you must know that we are losing faith towards God. Without the power of God, all of our problems cannot be solved. It could be big problems, or it could be small problems. But no matter what the problem is, if it isn't the power of God, we might we must know that we cannot solve those problems. That is why they're praying, make the fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil. In this power, come upon us, and that is the conviction the Israelites make. In verse five, you meet him who jolly, jo joyfully. Works righteousness. It means that God will take care of us. It means that God will not put those who await God into discouragement. 
To those who wait for God, God will absolutely answer. And that is why we must pray before God. What kind of situations or problems do you guys have? Are there problems inside of the church? God knows all of those problems. He's not the one that does not know. And God wants the people of God, because of that problem, to come before God and pray. And we are going to be able to see that God is the one who takes care of those problems. And I'm able to see that many people right now are discouraged and very sad. And as the elder prayed today, I know that all of us have the same heart. And I'm realizing that uh, you guys are facing very uh, hardship. So, and I keep having the thoughts, how can I help our believers? And throughout the week, I think about that. And in the midst of that, I held on to this. God is still alive. And just like the choir prays today, God will accurately guide us by the Holy Spirit. Then we just have to hold on to that power and pray before God. If you are the child of God, then God will absolutely guide His children. That is why I pray. It will be hard. It will be... It will be a time of difficulties. I know that you guys are having this troubled heart because of the problems that are occurring inside of the churches right now. And I too am very sorry before all of you. But if God has guided our church with the power of God, then in the future, I know that God will absolutely guide our church. It's not the power of God that disappeared. It is the faith that has disappeared. So really, through the problems, may this be the time where we truly restore faith. And as I was preparing the messages throughout the week, this is the passage that I gained a little bit, uh, where I gained the strength a little bit. I know that we, I had to pray, but I couldn't pray. I don't know what I had to pray for. And God gave me a little bit of strength. And that word was uh, the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms 31 verses 1 through 3, it tells us, let us all read together. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ears to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to me, to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. And now let's take a look at verse 9. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. And in verse 10, it tells us, For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. This is my strength failed because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. And this was recorded by uh, this was recorded in the book of Psalms and if you see in verse 12 today I have been forgotten like one who is dead 
After we give a confession of faith, we always lose hold of it. It says, I, am, I have become like a broken vessel. In verse 13, for I hear the whispering of many terrors on every side. As they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. And at this time, David makes his confession. Even though it is those kind of situations, if you see in verses 14 and 15, let us read together. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of the, my enemies and from my persecutors. Hallelujah. He says, But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, You are my God. Even though the situation and everybody is co coming up against me, yet I trust in you and I, I say, You are my God. He, he didn't fall into the environments. He was able to give the confession of faith. And this is the grace that God gives to David. In verse 19, Oh, how abundant is your goodness which you have stored up. So he was able to see the abundant grace, the blessing, that God has stored up for, for, for David. So, in time of trouble, when we go before God, we are able to see that God gives us grace. And he goes out praying because of his problems, but you're able to see God gives him the grace so that he becomes the witness to save many people just as him. In verse 24, Be strong and let your heart take courage. And that is why he goes out with the bold courage and prays before God. He was able to say, Love the Lord, all you his saints. And he was used as a witness to save all of the people. The power of God today and yesterday is the same. Is the problem is our faith has been diminished. So at the time of troubles, make the confession of faith. What did the what's the misconception that the Israelites had? God worked upon them with power during the time of Exodus, but it seemed as if the power has disappeared. But it wasn't the power of God that disappeared, but the faith of God, faith towards God has been disappeared. God is still taking care of my life. And really hold on to that faith. Second, those who hold on to the Lord, there is a way for us to live. We must know that we are just the clay of God. God couldn't... Uh, the Israelites could not understand God. That is why they were having conflicts. But later on, they find out the uh, reason. That is why if you see verse 8 in today's passage, they were able to give the confession that we are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the works of your hand. And they find the answer. God has created us into a clay. The people who walk the walk of faith, there are many people who try to 
be recognized by other people inside of the church with the things of the world. Though that we might have a lot of knowledge and have many positions, we are just clay. If God just plugs our nose for a little, little bit, we go. We might seem like we are very all great and all, but we are all just clay. Why are there clay? So that the potters could make vessels. So the potter can make whatever he wants. He can make a, a feeding cup or a vessel. If a rice is inside, it becomes a vessel for rice. If it is a vessel for porridge, it just becomes a vessel for porridge. Yes, there are also very... Uh, renowned and good vessel but we are all just a vessel of clay but if the word of God is placed inside of that vessel then then that becomes a treasure treasure vessel the word of God is, has been placed inside of a vessel of clay. But God has given us uh, the greatest present. In that vessel of clay, God has given us the word of God. When uh, the elder, when he was praying, uh, elder prayed about the Jewish people and the Pharisees. If you see the Pharisees, their lives are so great. And their backgrounds and their lives are perfect. And their vessels are very great. But what did Jesus say to the Pharisees? If you see in Matthew 23, 27, it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs. It said, Which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bone and all unclean. Cleanness. No matter how beautiful the vessel of the Pharisees and the scribes are, but what is inside of that, it is full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So what has God given us then? God has given us the word. Why did he give us the word? Because the only way to have victory inside of the age of crisis, it is the word. Right now, it is the age of disaster. It is the age of spiritual problems. And gradually, it will get worse. Even in Revelation, it has been prophesied. The evil will become more evil. Gradually, disasters will befall us more. Everybody is going to face mental problems. Not just the people of the world, even the people inside of the church, even our prosperities. And we follow after economy and finances of the world, but later on, that was just going to give us side effects. But in this time of crisis, there is the way to have victory. It is for the Word of God to be placed inside of our jar of clay.
Paul. 이제 마지막이라 생각하고 남겨놓은 에베소 장로들을 향해서 기도한 내용이 uh, 장에 나옵니다. Made the elders of the church of Ephesus come together. 앞으로 사나운 이 때가 교회 안에 올 것이다. 30절에 제자들을 끌어 자기를 따르게 하고 어그러진 말을 하는 사람들이 일어날 것이다. 그래 내가 일깨워서 3년이나 밤낮 쉬지 않고 너희를 위해서 기도했다고 했어요. 32절에 중요한 말씀하고 있습니다. 그 위기가 올 때에 지금 내가 여러분을 주와 그 은혜의 말씀 앞에 부탁한다 했어요. And Paul 그 말씀이 여러분을 든든히 세운다 했어요. said that the word of God will raise you guys up. It is the method for us to have victory inside of the age of crisis. The word of God will raise us up. You know all well that the storm that came upon Paul, but Paul was not swayed by that. 나는 말씀하신 그대로 되리라고 하나님을 믿노라 말씀했습니다. He says in Acts 27:25, So take heart, man, for I believe I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. 그 보좌의 능력이 임하게 될때 땅을 정복하게 되고요. When the throne comes upon us, then we will conquer the world. And we are able to conquer myself, which is the source of all, all spiritual problems. In the end of times, inside of our life, which is like uh, jars of clay, I really hope that the Word of God be inside of that jar. When the word of God is placed inside of us, then for the gospel movement, we must be use the word for the word movement. And that is the way for us to block the disasters that is coming inside of the field. If you see in Acts 20 or Acts 19, the power of the it was the power that was revealed in the Church of Ephesus. Those are the passage that was shown in Acts 19, verses 11 and on. Many problems inside of Ephesus was solved. So because of us, the spiritual problems inside of Daegu must be solved. So the word that is placed inside our vessel, we must relay this to the field. And that's why I told you during the Friday night service. God has guided our church as the model church. And as the Hana church members, we were led by the pulpit. And we also received many answers through the para ministry. And so now with that, what do we do? We must make a system inside of our church where we are able to save the, all of the fields. It's not the walk of faith that we walk so that I can make a better living for myself. We must become the church where we are able to really relay the word and the answer to the field and save the field. That is why we have to change all of the systems inside of the church. All of the trainings that you have received till today, now you guys must go to the field and relay that. We are inside of the church, that is why we might not know. But there are no other churches that are very well trained like our church. 
it is same for the regional churches. And holding on to all of the local churches, it is the same. And you guys have received those trainings. Now, with the trainings that you have received, we must plow inside of the field. There are so many people that are struggling to find the answers inside of the field. We have a time of baptism. And this one person gave a confession. There's a person that uh, delivers food to the restaurants. But he always had the thought that I must die. He couldn't, his life wasn't taking place. So he said, why must I live? But every time he goes to this one restaurant in the Hwawon region, this one person will keep on giving him some paper. He just thought to himself that, oh, that's just a person that goes to attends church. So he just threw that inside of the church, in, inside of the car, and didn't even look at it. And he had the heart to die, and he set his car aside and had his head down, but he found the paper that he received. And in, in that paper, it talked about suicide, and that came inside of his heart. He always had the heart to commit suicide. He thought, oh, should I stab myself to death? Or should I take medication and die? He, was, he had always had that thought. But later on, he, found, he realized he realized that he was seized by demons. And now he, he fell into alcohol and he lived those kind of lives. He always saw that his uh, grandmother would always bow down to idols. Later on, as he was living his life, he only had the thought to commit suicide. But as he saw the handout that was given to him during that, from that one restaurant, it was a time schedule for him. And he is seated here. And he was able to receive the gospel later on, and he started his walk of faith. And he will be now baptized. And he gave that kind of confession. It was just one person. But there's so many people like him around us. And they can't even speak of their problems. And there's no one to speak of this problem. That is why we must go into all the places and give the gospel. Even though they might not listen, we must do our job. So really, so that all of our believers could go head out as an evangelist to the 237 nations, we, must, we will receive trainings. I really hope that all of our Hanukkah Church members could truly have the Word of God placed inside of us. And God wants us to proclaim this word. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May all of our Hana Church members become the people really who enjoy these blessings.
회복시켜 주옵소서 질거룩신 나에게 하나님의 말씀을 담아 주옵소서 재앙시대를 이길 복음의 말씀 운동이 현장에 일어나게 하옵소서 말씀 잡은 기도 제목들 가지고 함께 찬양하는 시간 갖고